Hello, welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. As uh, many of you know, this past weekend, uh, director Tony Scott passed away, and I was very sad to uh, hear this, as Tony had been one of my favorite uh, film directors over the years. A lot of his movies I really love, like, you know, True Romance, Beverly Hills Cop 2. I mean, just the list goes on and on. I know he's best known for, you know, doing Top Gun. That was his biggest movie, but he did a lot of great things. He really help shape modern uh, for the last 20 years cinema you know he's just as visionary in his own right as his brother Ridley was and uh, I was I was sad to hear this as I'm sure many of you movie fans were so in order to kind of say goodbye or whatever I decided I wanted to you know watch sit down watch a Tony Scott movie to remember the man remember his talent I just decided to go all the way back to the beginning and take a look at his first movie The Hunger Hunger is a really interesting movie, 1983 film, his first film. It was based on a book by uh, famous author Whitley Stryber. Plot concerns a couple of vampires played by Catherine Deneuve and David Bowie. The movie starts out just brilliant, brilliant, visionary opening. Probably actually my favorite opening to any movie ever. Before I had the DVD, I had the actually the VHS of this and I actually watched the movie and rewind it and rewind it. I just loved it. Has a great opening, starts out in a club, Bauhaus is playing Bella Lugosi's Dead, one of my favorite songs of all time. And then it's kind of like a cool music video montage between the band performing and the people dancing in this club. You see the two vampires staking out their prey, moving in, cuts to, you know, like like they cut to the other scenes that are happening later at the same time. It's just it's just brilliant. So basically the gist of the story is these two vampires Catherine Deneuve is kind of like the master vampire. David Bowie is, you know, the, her companion that she turned. Well, you know, she promised him that he would live forever, and it turns out he starts aging rapidly. Turns out really the truth was that she never told him was all her, you know, all her lovers, all the people she keeps with him as vampire companions. Eventually, the immortality runs out for them. She's the master vampire, so she keeps going, but they wither away fucking comes in, they're trying to get some help, trying to save David Bowie, so they come across Susan Sarandon, who plays a doctor who's re trying to reverse aging to help, like, not only people dying, but, you know, young kids who have advanced aging diseases, stuff like this. So they contact her to help David Bowie, unfortunately it's too late for him, he so it just, you know, the process, like, he literally in one, in like a day and a half, he ages like a hundred years, he's just dying. Fucking Catherine Nove, fucking such a cold vampire, fucking just takes him, puts him in a coffin while he's still alive and fucking pushes him in the attic next to all her other past lovers and shit. Just very cold, creepy. The visual style, and that's the thing, the real talent of Tony Scott is when you hear him talk about this movie, a lot of people said the script was not very good. So what he did was, instead of, you know, focusing on the script that was kind of weak, he took it and he visualized it. I mean, the camera movements, I mean, this movie is just beautiful to look at. One of the prettiest movies I think ever shot. And the way he edited everything together, it just evokes more of a mood, more of an atmosphere than most films do. It's kind of deliberately slow paced, but it's a lot of visual information. He uses music perfectly to a T to tell the story. Just brilliant, brilliant direction on his part. And, it, and especially when you look at it and you realize it was his first film, I mean, it's just an amazing accomplishment. So back to the story. Bowie's gone, but Catherine didn't know she run across Susan Sarandon and she, you know, she's looking for her next companion already. She kind of has like a lesbian, you know, attraction, whatever. Susan Sarandon starting to get entranced by her, you know, they meet together. There's an awesome lesbian scene where they have sex. Susan Sarandon starts out wearing this little white t-shirt with no bra, you see her nipples. She spills wine, fucking classic porno move. Catherine Neuve gets her naked, next thing you know they're eating each other's boxes. And unfortunately, Susan Sarandon gets bitten. So Susan Sarandon, she doesn't know what's happened to her. You know, she's like turned into a vampire and shit. Her boyfriend, played by Cliff DeYoung, he's doing all these tests trying to help her out. You know, she's trying, but she's hiding the secret of what really happened. So she goes back, confronts Catherine Deneuve. Fucking, you know, she tells the truth of what's really happening to her. So the rest of the movie is kind of playing out. Is Susan Sarandon going to accept being a vampire and spend her, you know, 
Again, she, just like David Bowie was, she's promised eternity, but as we know from knowing the previous story, that ain't gonna way it's gonna turn out. The last half hour, it's really, I gotta say, man, for a vampire movie, people, all that, like, they don't have fangs, they don't have nothing, they just drink blood, and they're just fucking cold, and the, yeah, they go out in the daylight and shit, and this shit was fucking 30 years before Twilight, so don't even try to say that Twilight fucking came up with that shit, because the hunger was kicking it way back when. Most vampire movies are a dime a dozen, but the way Tony Scott really just kind of put a real ethereal, spooky, haunting, chilling quality in this, man, you don't see most vampire movies really building up the mood like this one does. So as a movie, really great visuals to tell the story, and then some great performances from Bowie, Deneuve, Susan Sarandon, fucking, you know, great cast. The cast is so good, there's actually a scene... Susan Sarandon goes down to use a phone booth. A couple guys pass her like, hey, bitch, get out of the phone. We got to use the phone. Turns out the two guys, they have one line of piece. is John Pankow and Willem Dafoe, who, of course, like the next year later, would go on a co-star to live and die in L.A. And they just got like one little line. Willem Dafoe got like, one little line in this movie. That tells you how great the cast is, the attention to detail. Tony Scott knew talent when he fucking saw it and he used it to perfection. The Hunger is a vampire movie being completely original. I gotta give it a fucking eight and a half out of ten. Picture and sound, this is really interesting. The print that they used to make this DVD actually came from Tony Scott's personal collection, it was his own personal print of the movie. And the reason was a lot of the release prints that they used before they would show on TV, make videos out of and shit. They had a real fucked up color timing. They were, you know, they looked like a regular movie. They're kind of orange and bright, scenes were brightly lit. That's not the way Tony Scott wanted. He wanted very cool, very bluish. Very, t you know, he had a certain color timing, very cold, that, you know, just for whatever reason the studio didn't go with and made all these fucked up prints. So he cared enough, man, to give the company his personal print that was colored out the way he wanted it. So you're going to see the real version of the hunger in this, you know, and it's very effective, very beautiful to look at. On the audio side, it's just a mono soundtrack, which I guess is the original sound format of this movie. But I'll give him credit, man. It actually sounded really good. Everything was really punchy and stuff, you know. It sounded like an older soundtrack, but it held up pretty well for what it was. Spatial and sound, really enjoyable presentation. Nice to see the movie the way it was supposed to be seen. I want to give it 8 out of 10. Now, extra features, they didn't shit the bed, but there isn't a whole lot. Thankfully, there's a comment, audio commentary from uh, Tony Scott and Susan Sarandon. They're not in the same room together, but they do commentaries and they kind of splice them together. So you hear, you know, the different viewpoints, Tony, what he was thinking. And, and I'll tell you what, you gotta love the guy. He's, he's, he's really modest. He talks about it being his first film and, you know, maybe some things he could have done better and stuff. But, you know, even, even though he's very humble, man, I gotta say, to me, this is just a fucking masterpiece. They also have a theatrical trailer, which is interesting because after you watch the movie, you can watch the theatrical trailer. And you see what I was talking about before where the version of the movie on the disc and the trailer, like the c color timing was all fucked up. Just, it doesn't look as, you know, gothic or moody. And when you see, you see the shots in the trailers they did in the feature film. They also have a bunch of s little still galleries that show behind the scenes. They show publicity photos. They show some makeup. To, there's some great makeup in this movie from Dick Smith. He did the old age makeup as, you know, David Bowie aged out. So those pictures are interesting. I mean, it's not a jam-packed special edition, but there is good special features. And what is there, I think, is pretty good quality. So special features, I'm going to give it 6.5 out of 10. So that's it for The Hunger Man. It was just a real pleasure to sit down again and watch this movie. And, you know, I got to say, man, I saw it kind of differently. You know, there's a lot of themes about life and death and stuff. And, you know, that was really playing in my mind, just knowing that Tony Scott just passed away. And... I mean, what can you say? The man's first film, he hit a home run. But the reason he hit a home run was he took a vampire movie, which had been done to death and has been done to death since then, and he made it completely original, completely his own, made it an audio-visual experience. And that's where I think Tony Scott's real talent lied with putting images up on the screen that just last in your head for a lifetime, you know? So, hey, Tony Scott, man, what can I say? One of my favorite directors is going to be really weird like not seeing like you know he made he, he pretty consistent he's made a lot of movies over the years i was always used to you know seem like every year going to the theater and seeing a preview for a new tony scott movie and stuff and you know that's that's just not going to happen anymore for whatever reason just not in the cards so you know if you're like me if you're a tony scott fan put this down in the comments talk about whatever your favorite tony scott movies is and stuff and uh he won't be forgotten because 
in my opinion, you know, definitely in my lifetime, he's one of the great visionary directors. So, Tony Scott, rest in peace, man.